Well, what is up, veterans, military, YouTube fam? Hey, today's banger is going to be on respiratory cancers and how it relates to the VA PACT Act and the law that just came out. Hey, if y'all like this type of content, tune in, check it out. Hey, this, this is going to be a banger for y'all. And at the end, we'll talk about any updates to the current processing times for the PACT Act claims. Now, let's get into the slide deck. Now, this is going to be the list of the main categories that the VA is looking for when analyzing and evaluating veterans for presumptive respiratory cancers. This includes lung cancer, trachea, larynx, as well as bronchus. A. The symptomologies for all of these closely relate to one another. So with that being said, I strongly suggest each vet that is watching this video get into your primary care provider get evaluated for a respiratory cancer if you are experiencing any of these symptomologies. Now, with that being said, A, private medical is always the way to go, but if you are dealing with VA medical, depending on where you are in the States or overseas, it could be difficult because sometimes VA medical, they like to treat, but they don't like to diagnose veterans for disabilities, let alone cancers. They try to wait until the last minute However, hey, you you are your best advocate, and it's, I implore you to definitely get in there, talk to your doctor. If you're dealing with VA medical, hey, if the doctor's giving you the runaround, request to speak to their supervisor and see if you can get a new primary care provider assigned to you. If not, hey, there's always different levels of complaints that you can do, and that's what I recommend that you all do moving forward. Now, getting into the compensation for active respiratory cancers. So, first off, all active cancers for the VA are going to be 100%. You'll maintain 100% as long as the cancer is active. Now, the VA will be doing six-month evaluations just to ensure that it's still active. Once the veteran is healed and the cancer is considered not deadly and it's completely gone from the veteran's body, that is when the VA will come in and give you an additional six months of 100% benefits while they evaluate you to see which disability related to respiratory conditions that they can assign you that closely relates to the cancer in which you were affected to. And the general percentages for respiratory disabilities by the VA range from 10, 30, 50, 60, and 100%. So if you are currently at 100% and you have active cancer, and you know you feel you feel, and medical reports are saying that a, you're you're going into remission, you're getting it better. It's getting you know, it's showing signs that it's going to be depleted out of your body. At this time, you still should be building medical evidence because the VA is not your friend. If you got private medical, they're always your friend. Hey, take care of it. Take hey, they'll get you. And while you're coming off of that hundred percent, it's good to have your medical documents and evidence ready. To see which you know which category that the VA is going to place you in. If you already have a disability diagnosed within one of those categories, a it'll be easy butter for you to submit that claim or provide that information to the VA when that time does come. VA is looking for DD-214, you know POW, prisoner of war, personnel evaluations. Not many military personnel get these you only start getting these after you've reached you know, obtain the range of non-commissioned officer pretty much across the services i could be wrong i know as you know in the marine corps you know baby marines anything less than a corporal corporal and below you'll get evaluations for your pros and cons you know your productivity and your conduct however you know it's not going to say it may or may not say exactly where you served in, what exposures you were, you know. It can't pinpoint your areas because those evaluations are so volatile. Going, you know, LES is a strong piece of evidence that can establish and link you, place you into a country that was exposed to all of these toxic exposures. Burn pits, Agent Orange, Blue Water Navy, if you served on naval ships, Persian Gulf, Kuwait. Afghanistan, Iraq, the list goes on. Vehicle and aircraft manifest. If you're some of those veterans that worked on vehicles or aircrafts, manifest flying over these areas, as well as on you know boots on ground, always driving around. Hey, those can be utilized as well. After action reports, 
medical treatments of any kind within the area of operations. So pretty much any of the listed items. Hey, I got a, I got a link to that list. I'll leave it in the top right corner. Moving on to that. Hey, you can utilize that as well. Actual exposure to toxins. So if you was actually, you know, one of those veterans while you was active duty, you were tasked with, you know, managing the burn pits or you was exposed to, you know, actual Asian Orange, like on your body, on your person. Hey, get those reports in. I hope you have some documentation and that's concrete evidence right there. You don't even need anything else. I mean, you don't need, but that's all you need to establish presumptive connection. Okay, lay statements, unit diary logs, as well as others. So, if you have any of these, it's good. It will establish your presumptive condition. However, depending on how you word your personal statement, any additional medical evidence, definitely you still need a diagnosis. It's going to determine what percentage you get. However, if you have an active cancer due to any of these disabilities, respiratory, hey, get your claim in. Get the benefits you deserve as well as the treatment you deserve. Hey. Now going into the last slide, just to sum up everything. Hey. Inlink service showing that you served. You can use anything off the previous slide to establish your presumptive connection. You don't need any complaints while you was in. DD-214, personal evals, LES, anything that can show that you was in country that was exposed to a toxic exposure. Hey, that's all you're going to need. Second thing you're going to need is a proper diagnosis, not treatment, diagnosis. If you have a private doctor, they're always willing to give you a diagnosis and then treat. If you have VA doctors, they like to treat first, string you along until they give you a, a proper diagnosis. Third is going to be personal statement. Work on your personal statement. Put all your symptomology at the top and then go into your battle. When it started, how you're dealing with it on a daily basis, how it's continued to affect you. How it's going to, you know, hey. Hospital visits, post-service, either for treatment, ER, urgent care, whatever the case may be. This can be utilized as supporting medical evidence, as well as lay and buddy statements. Going into that, hey, if y'all like this type of content, y'all know what to do. I ain't got to keep telling y'all. The next video that's going to be coming out, I'll be working on, is going to be mainly pertaining to mental health conditions. I need to pick one. Hey, but I got y'all. I got y'all. I looked at the polls. I'm looking at y'all. May not be a lot, but I am seeing y'all. Hey, keep up the good work. Year 22. Hey, this year is the year to bet. 